Monday, January 27th, 2014. Last night I made an isotropic vector equilibrium model after dwelling upon it for some time. This is a model of reality, according to Buckminster Fuller. Euclid and his plane geometry are wrong, according to RBF. Nature's geometry is much simpler and more soundly designed, as depicted by certain fundamental shapes, specifically the triangle, tetrahedron, octahedron, and isotropic vector equilibrium. Last night I came back from visiting Dan and Rick. After watching some TV and playing computer games, I searched my notes and Buckminster Fuller's Synergetics book for some instructions on how to make an isotropic vector equilibrium model. I also watched the neat YouTube video of the, of the guy jitterbugging it. I ended up just looking at a diagram in the book. It is not a complicated shape. After staring at the IVE a minute, I realized that there were only eight identical equilateral triangles that needed to be made. Two of these triangles formed the top and bottom of the shape. They were pointed in opposite directions. Then there was a row of three triangles in the upper part of the figure, facing up with their apexes touching the three apexes of the top triangle. Next, there was a row of three more triangles facing down and touching the apexes of the bottom triangle. One side of each of the three top triangles connected apexes of the bottom triangles. I couldn't tell by looking at the diagram if all the segments of the isotropic vector equilibrium model were equal in length, and all the angles were 60 degrees. In some pictures, it looked like some of the angles were 90 degrees. I went ahead and decided to make the first attempt at the model with eight identical equilateral triangles. I quickly sketched out the pieces I would need on a piece of paper. If you look at the IVE, you notice it has three squares in the upper tier and three squares in the lower tier. These form themselves as you connect the triangles together according to the diagram. To make my model, I used the straws that came in Kurt's quick trip beverages. He goes there all the time, so Mom had saved quite a few saved up. I contemplated using the whole straw for each side of the IVE, but realized that would make it pretty big, so I ended up cutting the straws in half. Hooking the straws together in the shape of a triangle was my first challenge. Duct tape would have been ineloquent, but for the first time, just to get a sense of the shape, I thought it would be okay. Then I noticed the straws varied in diameter. Some of them, some of them slipped into each other with varying degrees of friction. I decided to join straws together by slipping a piece of a narrower straw in each end and bending it into form the angle in the triangle. I had to play it by ear when it came to how long to cut these connectors. If they were too short, they would slip out. When I ran out of narrower straws, I took ones the exact same length and snipped their ends a couple times. This allowed the end to fit inside a straw of the same width. Mom had saved all the straws from the quick drip drinks. Most of them were red, but some of them were clear, and a few had red and yellow stripes on them. I decided to use the striped ones for the top and bottom triangles, the red ones for the first tier, and the clear ones for the second tier. The next challenge, challenge was to decide how to connect the eight equilateral triangles. Again, tape or glue were undesirable. Both tape and glue create a solid, which essentially freezes the figure and doesn't allow it to move at the joints. Vertices. In addition, tape and glue are heavy and can break or tear. I know this from having to repeatedly glue the soles of my tennis shoe. Then I remembered the round container of rubber bands Mom had in the bedroom. Amongst the collection were a bunch of tiny ones only three quarters inch in diameter. Actually, at first, I took the longer ones and attempted to tie them without opening them cutting them into strings. That didn't work. The knots loosened. Then I took scissors and snipped open the three-quarter inch bands into strong strings of rubber band. I tied them like shoelaces around the apexes of two triangles that needed joining. It worked great. Tying and wrapping things made of elastic band is wonderful. I think that's why I prefer to use a bungee cord to secure a rolled-up sleeping bag. When you stretch the elastic, there is a contracting force not only in the opposite direction of the stretch, but also in cross directions. The rubber band gets thinner as you pull it apart. 
That means that there are also a slew of forces pulling crosswise. This is what makes the knot you make out of it secure. Maybe all shoestrings should be made elastic. It was surprisingly easy to tie the short pieces of rubber band strings. When I ran out of string to hold between my fingers, I just made it longer by stretching. When I got done with my first attempt to make the isotropic vector equilibrium, I was fairly pleased. I sort of wish my IVE looked sleeker, like the paper models I made of the tetra, octra, and icosahedrons. I had even painted their sides with colored pencils and numbered them for effect. But the beauty of the IVE was completely in its integrity and system design. I see in any figure made out of identically sized equilateral triangles as having an immense amount of integrity. All the segments were identical in length. All the angles of the eight triangles were 60 degrees. The isotropic vector equilibrium model can be cleverly folded. It folds naturally down into a simple four-sided tetrahedron, passing through the shape of the eight-sided octahedron. I have seen a video and read written instructions on how to do it. I call pressing your IVE into a tetrahedron and pulling it back out into an IVE jitterbugging. In his book, Synergetics, Buckminster Fuller refers to this model and action as the jitterbug. This represents the fundamental energy of the universe, whether it be a collection of forces at the atomic level or the forces that toss planets around within its galaxy. In addition, the IVE represents the outer shell of the closest packed spheres around a single sphere. If you take one sphere and surround it by a bunch of equally sized spheres, you will find that only you only get 12 spheres around it, but they fit together neatly with no play whatsoever. If you remove the center sphere and take the radii emitting out from the center of the rest, you get the isotropic vector equilibrium. The isotropic vector equilibrium exists in nature only an idea, according to Buckminster Fuller. Any object has a collection of forces surrounding it. Of course, you have gravity pulling things together toward its center, but you also have all these other forces going other directions. These are depicted by the vectors, or straws, in the IVE model. Each one of the straws represents the radius of one of the spheres in the closest packing of spheres around a single sphere. RBF says that nature abhors equilibrium. Equilibrium is when the forces going one direction exactly balances the forces going the other direction. Of course, this would mean the object is stationary while actually concealing all this potential energy, like a stretched rubber band. But things are always full of energy going back and forth, positive and negative, and the vector equilibrium is just the zero point. So it's more of an intellectual construct or something we imagine after observing what we can see. RPF says the energy doesn't even pause at equilibrium. One morning, after making my models of the octahedron and the dodecahedron, I woke up wondering what would happen if things ever did stop at equilibrium. It seems that the universe is regenerative, as RBF says, because it passes through equilibrium. Everything is going to and fro in an effort to reach equilibrium. It reminds me of when I tried to fly an airplane and I kept oversteering it, right, and then oversteering it left, and then right, and then left. The instructor finally had me use the tip of my little finger to steer. It helped a little. In this case, do we really want to obtain perfect equilibrium, perfect as it may be? What would happen? Everything seems to rely on the to-and-fro activity. Everything seems to be defined by the opposites and opposing forces. Life and death, happiness and sadness, convex, concave, push and pull, on ad finitum. One wonders what would happen if everything reached equilibrium. There would no longer be a need for all that activity. Maybe everything would stop existing. A comment on meditation. When we meditate, stillness of the mind occurs. The cessation of all thoughts, absolute stillness of everything. That's why I've entertained the idea of calling myself a quantum physicist when someone asks what I do for a living. I really believe this meditation thing involves the manipulation of reality at the atomic level. I think by meditating and stilling the mind utterly and completely, you literally stop all atomic activity. What comes with this is a complete awareness of everything, and then complete non-awareness. My first impression of the finished model was a bit of uneasiness, due to the fact that it was so crooked. It would not even sit on its base. It flopped over on one of the side triangles. 
I had to torque it here and there with pretty much all ten fingers to make it look at least similar to the pretty diagram in RBF's book, and I had thought tweaking the octahedron was challenging. Last night I made an isotropic vector equilibrium model after dwelling upon it for some time. This is a model of reality, according to Buckminster Fuller. The use of the XYZ coordinate system by scientists and in our schools is wrong. Humanity must move on, and I agree.